so uh, uh, how uh, so you are basically coming from uh, uh, fourth and fifth years no the students who are uh, participating in this lecture are from uh, the third and fourth uh, years no uh, can you uh, type in the chat box uh, so uh, have you participated in uh, the microwave propagation uh, engineering course uh, which i did in this year or not are there any students who have not done the microwave engineering course i'm just asking it's okay that you have not done it i think most have done that uh, microwave engineering course i think uh okay there are some people who have not done it uh, apart from that do you need me to explain in uh, single also because last time when we did the lectures like i felt that some students did not understand what i was teaching them and then at the end of the course we had to you know like uh, have some discussion sessions for that so at the end of the lecture maybe i will try to summarize what we have covered using both english and sinhala so that uh, all the people can ask questions if they have and also they can get some idea uh, about the uh, materials that they have we have covered uh, so i mean uh, uh, so i mean welcome to this lecture series uh, on the antenna and microwave communications so Uh, i will be doing the courses uh, in the first half and then uh, uh, nuan will uh, conduct nuan atanayaka will conduct uh, some of the sections so uh, so so basically we will be learning about antennas and how they uh, will propagate waves and how we can uh, you know control the waves such that we can transmit the waves in a certain direction and with high intensity so that we can uh, successfully send our uh, information to uh, from one place to another uh, place so uh, from the past time people have been using these antenna technologies to Uh, send their information uh, in certain scenarios such as like military applications when there was uh, the world war and uh, when they wanted to ensure that their security is like uh, established uh, antennas were very essential so i think like there's no need for us to explain uh, us to uh, think uh, about it uh, as much because i think we all know that we need uh, all, all of all of our uh, communicating devices need the antennas to uh, to communicate with the other devices and also i mean it is uh, like vitally important in uh, for example in like air communications when and the air, aeroplanes and uh, they need when they need to communicate with the land towers and also currently uh, the underwater communications are also getting popular so uh, in underwater communications also we use specific types of antennas and specific types of uh, radio waves and other electromagnetic waves to communicate so we uh, are generally covering uh the characteristics of antennas in this course so from that co from that idea you will be able to have some idea about how you can design antennas that will suit for other conditions so so uh, basically an antenna is a device which can convert electric power into electromagnetic waves so antenna will uh, basically uh, generate electromagnetic waves and uh, it, it is uh, uh so uh basically uh it will uh sometimes it can uh it can create the uh, 
like electromagnetic wave based on the uh, characteristic of the uh, antenna element, uh, which I will de describe later. So, um, or else we have to first create the electromagnetic wave and then send it through a certain uh, aperture, we would say, and then from that we will uh, uh, propagate our waves, magnify and pro propagate our waves. So uh, basically we have uh, basic antenna types are like uh, found in phones, mobile phones. There are very small antennas that we can uh, see in them and also they are very cheap to make. So I think uh, we in Sri Lanka, I think it is possible to make these antennas. Uh, so, uh, however, I think there's no much of industry for that. So I think uh, you can also think of, you know, creating such antennas in the future and also, I mean, bringing some income to here. And also we can think of, you know, having the mobile communication, mobile device industry in here. So, I mean, uh, there are very small type, small size antennas these days. So we have the TV antennas and uh, we have satellite dishes uh antennas and then we have the micro strip antennas so the there are certain types of antennas that we can have so all these are used for wireless communications so basically we need a antenna at the transmitter end and the at the receiver end to uh, uh, uh receive a, a, a reliable uh uh, radio link and also have a reliable information uh, transfer. So uh, there needs to be a transmitting uh, at the end, transmitting end and receiving end. There should be antennas and the antenna should be able to do all the uh, operations, transmitting and receiving. So uh, basically uh, the antenna will be uh, like having a certain conducting wave uh, conducting cable and then uh, in that cable we will be sending a wave and electromagnetic wave when we are transmitting and then the uh, the transmitted signal will have magnetic field and electric field uh, components and then uh, because of their variations in the uh, perpendicular directions a wave will be transfer transformed uh, transferred in the uh, space so once we are receiving also the same thing will happen. So the received uh, wave will go through, uh, will be received at the antenna and then the antenna will use multiple techniques uh, such as like maximum radio, uh, maximal ratio combining uh, where we combine multiple uh, waves we receive along different directions due to the multi-part propagation. And then we combine those waves and then we uh, use a certain, uh, you know, a receiver, MMSC receiver or like zero forcing receiver to decode the messages. So uh, antenna is the first uh, component which will receive the signals uh, that have been transmitted. And then uh, we have certain types of antennas. So we have like wire antennas. So these wire antennas are basically like a, composed of a certain, like a metal conductor where, the, uh, where we supply the uh, metal conductor with a certain signal. I mean, the, uh, a certain transmission line will provide a, uh, uh, provide a certain uh, wave uh, at the feeding point. Uh, and then uh, after that, the wave will go in the direction of the conducting element. So, uh, and then we have the loop antennas and we have the helix antennas and so on. So, I mean, in these uh, uh, antennas, the waves will be generated around the uh, this conducting element. So, uh, a wave will be generated around that uh, element and also we have a certain direction uh, along which that wave will be generated. So based on that, uh, if we are using these elements for a certain device, we need to check uh, along what direction this wave will propagate. And then according to that, we have to place the antenna in the device, right? So we have to check uh, the direction of the wave propagation. We have to check the intensity of the waves 
uh, that are generated. So these can be done while we are designing the device. So we have certain simulation software that we can, uh, from which we can check the direction of the wave propagation and the magnitude of the uh, radiation from that uh, element. So the radiation mag uh, intensity must also be sufficient enough for that signal to be reliably transferred across the space. So we can check all that using a simulation software and that uh, designs, uh, I mean, without, uh, without really creating the device, we can first check it using a simulation software. And also we have another type of antennas called aperture antennas. These aperture antennas have a certain aperture means like a hole like thing, like a hole like thing through which we send our electromagnetic wave. So basically that uh, there's a certain voltage source and that voltage source will create a certain like a electromagnetic wave across the transmission line and then the generated wave will be uh, sent through that aperture. So these uh, apertures are made such that the uh, the waves are propagated in the correct direction and in the correct uh, directivity, so that uh, it is like sent in the correct uh, to the correct location. Also, we know that uh, we have the parabolic reflect antennas. They are also part of aperture antennas. So basically, we are providing a certain signal to the feed horn or the feeding point and then from that point we are sending these uh, uh, signals to the dish and then the dish will uh, because of the shape of the dish the dish will create a certain uh, like uh, waves uh, the uh, waves in a certain direction such that uh, it will have a like a um, very direct uh, uh, very direct direction of uh, trans getting transferred. So because of the, uh, this is happening basically because of the shape of the dish. So I think you already have seen so many dishes in our SLTC. So, and also we have such small discs for like our TV connections and all. So they are still used because of this uh, ability for them to have a very good reception and transmission ability of uh, signals uh, by uh, by converging the, the strength of the uh, uh, receive signal to a one point and also diverging them uh, whenever needed to the correct direction. So we also have another type of antennas called microstrip antennas. So these antennas are basically designed for like very small like uh, circuits and uh, they are uh, they are they can be fabricated in large amounts in a small uh, PCB for example circuit so these are like oh, pictures of such microstrip antennas and uh, these uh, antennas will be uh, given a certain power at this feeding point uh, in the bottom and then uh, once you uh, transmit a certain uh, 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 like a signal like uh, I mean when you're feeding the feeding point with some voltage with some frequency that electromagnetic wave will be generated across this and uh, th this will generate electromagnetic waves across this uh, you know this uh, starting point and from that uh, we can see that uh, after it reaches the patch it will generate electromagnetic waves in certain directions so this figure shows how uh, the waves are generated inside the uh, microstrip uh, kind of antennas so the waves can go like uh, 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 in certain directions. So waves can go in the space uh, direction or in the lateral direction. So based on the uh, application that we have, we need to decide at what direction we need uh, the most of the uh, generated waves to go in. 
So based on that, we are designing our components and the lengths and the widths of that component uh, such that the the average or the uh, the maximum radiation will be in a certain direction or in a certain multiple directions that we want. And then also we have seen that we have array antennas. So base stations basically have these, uh, you know, multiple antennas like antenna sectors we called. So there are multiple and sector antennas which are uh, propped on the base stations and multiple of them are uh, used to cover the uh, entire like 360 angle area uh, sufficiently so that uh, the coverage is uh, optimal. So uh, we have like uh, in base stations, uh, we have this kind of uh, setups and we need to design these antennas and the tilt of these antennas sufficiently in a like a uh, we need to predefine them before installing them such that their angles are uh, correctly uh, uh, designed or like uh, decided uh, such that the coverage is maximum. So, uh, so these antennas are very popular and still used. And apart from that, we have like uh, array of antennas, which we call as multiple input, multiple output antennas, which can be stored in a very small uh, space like this. So we don't need very large antennas anymore. We can use very small circuit uh, for uh, storing multiple antennas using these PCB based, you know, antenna methods. So, uh, so they are becoming very popular now. I think China, countries like China and uh, America have already installed these multiple input, multiple output antennas at the base stations where there are multiple antennas in one place. For example, there are like 64 antennas in one, uh, like one array. And then, uh, uh, so it can create high, a reliability in the uh, signal transmission and signal reception because so there are many technologies that are used using i mean uh, signal processing techniques that are used to uh, combine the received signals uh, such that the information is decoded with the minimum error so in the transmission also once we have like 64 antennas at the base station and when there's a user at the end the user will be able to get multiple signals from the base station, uh, which means that, I mean, for a certain activity, it will, uh, the user will be able to get multiple signals of the same information, for example. And then using that, uh, so all those signals, the user can very efficiently uh, decode the message that have been transmitted from the base station. So that is uh, done using the MIMO technology. The MIMO technology is uh, based on this uh, array antennas. And then uh, they are be becoming very popular. So it is one of the enabling techniques in 5G also. So currently it is working in the industry. It is something done in practice as well. So it is very getting very popular. And apart from that, our smartphones are also uh, getting uh, installed with this MIMO antennas where there are multiple antennas in your phone. For example, I think uh, in the latest Apple phones and all Samsung phones also, uh, we have these multiple antennas where I think there are four antennas which are used to receive signals from the other devices on uh, base stations and so on. So once you have multiple antennas in your phone, your reception ability is really high and which which is really good because you can have high data rates even when you're traveling and when you want to use internet in the outside uh, areas. So in our lectures, we will be learning about the antenna radiation patterns. So antenna radiation patterns, as I said, we, we require it uh, very much because we want to know whether our antennas can generate enough power to transmit its signal reliably to the destination point. 
so radiation intensity so these are also used to measure the radiation uh, the power of the radiation uh, and uh, whether it's enough for the uh, reception to happen reliably uh, also the directivity of the antenna and the gain of the antenna so which means that whether we are able to control our wave in the correct direction so we can't uh, waste our energy we need to uh, we need to find the optimal way of uh, sending the signal by reducing the energy cost as much as possible so so the the direction of the wave must be controlled and also the the power that we uh, invest on transmitting the wave must be minimized so we need to have energy efficiency uh, energy efficiency which means we need to have a higher gain from the antenna so radiation efficiency and power gain uh, also we need to uh, we need to design how the uh, input parameters must be uh, must be uh, set such that our uh, transmission is uh, happening with the correct radiation intensity, correct directivity, and gain. Uh, so these characteristics have to be considered when we are designing a uh, an antenna. So uh, for the uh, current today, I think we are uh, we are expected to have an interactive session. So I hope that I gave you some background information about antennas as the initial step. And uh, from, uh, this, from this point onwards, what I expect you to do is that I want you to find uh, like uh, the, the places where antennas are used and what kind of a problem that antenna is solving. So I, I so like, we have to assume that we don't have an antennas at all. We have to assume that we don't have antenna, but when we don't have antennas, then we have some problems, right? So now if we want to send some certain signal from uh, our, our, like our location to maybe like, uh, our, let's say we want to send a call to the base station, then to another person right so it will first get transferred to the base station so how can we send a signal to the base station without antenna it's not possible right so what kind of antenna is suitable for that transmission uh, so that is what uh, i want you to understand so what is the problem the problem is like trans the the transmission of uh, signals from a mobile device to a another mobile device so what is the antenna which is suitable to communicate with the base station right so let's uh, like let's like uh, assume that the problem is that uh, transferring signals reliably from mobile devices to base, base station uh, so uh, the suitable antenna type you can search in the internet what kind of antenna types we are using in mobile devices to send our signals to the base station so why are those type of antennas used? Why not use some satellite dishes and why not use like uh, some other type of antenna types which are not suitable for that uh, application? And also you can search in the internet whether about the research works that have been done regarding that. For example, you might not be able to find whether about such research works, but uh, you can try to find why certain type of antenna is used for certain type of application or for, for a certain type of uh, scenario. So I will write the, in here as scenario. So I hope you are you can understand what you have to do so you need to like fill this table uh, you can fill maybe three scenarios four five scenarios and then uh, this would be the interactive activity that i would like you to do so you can i think there are i think how many people are there like uh, there are 
maybe 15 let's say like everybody can get together with uh, like uh, there could be people with three members in each group and uh, I want you to fill this table. So, uh, and one group will have only two members. So let's go ahead with that. Uh, I think I think 15 people are there because I think this participant uh, number is including me, no? So I think only 15 people, around 15 people are there. And if one is not having a group, maybe you can join to another one with the three members. So if, so I hope that you can communicate within yourself. Um, so anyway, I hope that you can complete this. So uh, I just want you to understand how antennas are used in the real world and what kind of problems these antennas are solving and what type of antennas are used for solving that problem. So whether also you need to verify whether these uh, the 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 performance of these antennas have been verified by experimental research works uh, in the papers by universities or industry right so you need to verify whether the performance have been verified by professionals also right so i hope that this activity will be interesting uh, for you uh, also like this uh, this is, uh, I would like to introduce you the software that I will be uh, using uh, to like uh, to do for you to do designs of antennas. So, I mean, we will be doing very small antenna designs. So, we will be uh, using this uh, software, which is called ANSYS HFSS. There are also some other softwares called ANSOFT. HFSS. I think there are very slight differences between some the softwares which are used for this activity. So uh, once you have the, uh, once you uh, just search for ANSYS HFSS in Google, you can find the free download link. From that, you can download this uh, software. And then you can uh, search in the software how, uh, the options are available, the toolbars and all, right? So, so in the next lectures, I will be cons talking about the radiation patterns, the, the different types of antennas and how we can, uh, you know, like have certain uh, radiation patterns using uh, that certain antennas. So, I will be, uh, I'm hoping to do that in the next classes. So uh, I hope like with today's uh, lecture, you got some idea. So I want you to do this activity. Uh, so shall I also just explain what we discussed in Singhala also now? And uh, I think in English, I think I already explained. So I will explain in Singhala also a little bit. But some words, some words, I might not be able to use Singhala to explain. So, uh, okay. So, antenna, antenna, can I tell my lecture? I pick her on me. So, the other P, Karan, basic introduction. So, antennas, well, the basically conducting cable, like I use Karala, pay can a voltage source. Uh, aka end a cake and a curl a voltage source king in a uh, signal a case strength uh, and a k a p frequency king tamai signal like a p generate karane ek nisa then a k inducting cable like a electromagnetic wave wake up be generate karagana that a generate karagan neck a p karagan again a p microwave engineering course a katakara especially transmission line uh classic edi but a voltage source a kati na transmission line a kati na wa the kota generate in a can a uh can a frequency a kavadi nisa uh a conducting cable like a uh voltage differences at even a at even a wave a form a kakudi here to the current current wave a kak 
current wave එකක් and voltage wave එකක් ඇති වෙනවා. එතකොට voltages currents වල ඒ තියෙන වෙනස නිසා ඒ electromagnetic wave එකක් ඒ wave එකක shape එකක එකකට තමයි ඒක හැදෙන්නේ. එතකොට ඒ හැදෙන transmission wave එක අපි antenna එකට feed කරපුවාම antenna එකේ elements වලත් ඒ wave එක propagate වෙනවා. ඒ propagate වෙලා ඒක ආපහු reflect වෙනවා. එතකොට ඒ يعني ඉස්සලා එක පැත්තකට transfer වෙනවා. transfer වෙලා ඒක ඒ antenna element එකේ end එකට ගිහාම end එකේ ඉඳන් අනිත් පැත්තට ඒ wave එකේ අර reflecting part එක propagate වෙනවා. the quarter reflecting and wave එක plus transmitting wave එක එක තුනම standing wave එකක් හැදෙනවා. ඒ standing wave එක හැදෙන්නේ මොකක් හරි direction එක. ඒතර ඒ හැදෙන direction එක අපිට ඕන විදිහට control කරගන්න ඕනේ අපේ application එක අනුව. For example අපේ mobile device එකේ පොඩි antenna එකක් තියෙනවා. ඒකේ හැදෙන wave එක අපිට ඕන direction එකට හැදෙන්න ඕනේ. එහෙම හැදුනොත් තමයි මේ base station එක හරි වෙන device එකකට හරි අපේ ඕන signal එක අපිට ඕන direction එකේ යවන්න වෙන්නේ. ඒ අවශ්‍ය direction එකේ යවන්න නම් අපි ඒ antenna device එක හරියට design කරන්න ඕනේ. ඒ design කරන්න අපිට simulation softwares තියෙනවා. सिविलेशन सॉफ्टवेयर्स वेलिंग अब डिजाइन कर ले इवर वेला अब ये बालागन पुलवंग ये मोने डिरेक्शन ने के द वेव वेका जेनरेट करने के आला तो वस्ते ये वगे रेडिएशन पैटर्न ने का बालागन ना पुलवंग तो ये रेडिएशन पैटर्न ने के अब ये पेन ना मोने डिरेक्शन ने के इंद में के पावर का वैरी एम्मे आने के तो कोटे ये ओकोम चेक कर ला तो माँ अभी ये डिवाइस का डिजाइन करानी ये पसंद माँ अभी ये वा फैब्रिकेट कर ला एक प्रोडक्शन ने कटे या वन में ने ये तो कोटे वायर एंटरना स्केल ला एंटरना जाती आती है ना ये तो कोटे वायर एंटरना के बेसिकली वायर एक आपने तं कंडक्टिंग वेव कंडक्टिंग केबल ले का तमा यूज कर ला दी ने एंटरना एक आ क्या � antennas තියෙනවා ඒ dipole antennas loop antennas helix antennas එහෙම කියලා. ඒකට එක එක devices වල තම මේ helix antenna කියන එක එහෙම නිකන් mobile devices ඇතුළු එහෙම දාන්න පුළුවන්. circuits ඇතුළු එහෙම දාන්න පුළුවන්. ඒක චූටි antennaවක්. අනිත් ඒවා මම හිතන්නේ يعني ගොඩක් වෙලාවට use වෙන්නේ outdoor activities. outdoor මේ activities වලට. इट वास हॉर्न एंटरनास कीपर्चर का हॉल सिदूर वगैरह अभी ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक वेव इंसर्ट करेंपर्चर के डिशन सारी हॉर्न एंटरना के हदर दिन शेप डिशन इतना प्रोपगेट अभी ट्रांसमीट पवर्फुल सिग्नल रिसीव कर सिग्नल टेक्नोलॉजी बस मैक्रो स्ट्रीप एंटना मल्टीपल इनपुट मल्टीपल अवटुट 
කියන ටෙක්නොලොජි එක. ඒ කියන්නේ ඇන්ටනාස් ගොඩක් තියෙන ඉන්පුට් සයිඩ් එකේ ඇන්ටනා ගොඩක් තියෙන අවුට්පුට් සයිඩ් එක. එතකොට දැන් බේස් ස්ටේෂන්ස් වල දැනටමත් අයිමෝ ටෙක්නොලොජි එක යූස් වෙනවා. ඒ කියන්නේ මල්ටිපල් ඇන්ටනාස් යූස් වෙනවා ට්‍රාන්ස්මිට් කරන්න එක ඒ කියන්නේ සිග්නල් ගොඩක් හරි එක සිග්නල් එකක් හරි බේස්ඩ් ඔන් ද සිටුවේෂන්. අපි හිතමු එක යූස් එකෙනෙක් ඉන්නවා එයාට විතරක් අපි සිග්නල් එකක් යනවා. එතකොට මයිමෝ ඇන්ටනාවක් යූස් කරනවා නම් ඒ ඔක්කොම අපි හිතමු ඒ ඒ යූසට යවනවා කියලා ඒ සිග්නල් එක. එතකොට ඒ යූසට හම්බෙන රිසෙප්ෂන් එක ගොඩක් වැඩි. කියන්නේ අපි දැන් වයලස් කමියුනිකේෂන් කරද්දී අපිට තියෙන මේන්ම චැලෙන්ජ් එක තමයි ඒ සිග්නල් එක හරියට රිසීවට යන්නේ නැති ප්‍රශ්නේ තමයි තියෙන්නේ එනවරම්බන්ට් එක අනුව. ඉතින් මයිමෝ ටෙක්නොලොජි එකකින් අර ඔක්කොම ඇන්ටනා ටික मल्टीपल <laughs> मुखाद इंप्रूवने साक्षि Now, for example, with a phone and base station is connected. If you have a base station is connected, then you have a mobile phone and you have an antenna type. And then you have a reliably signal to transfer to the base station. This is the scenario. How to reliably transfer or reliable communication from a mobile device to a base station. That is the scenario. So, it's suitable antenna type. You can use it as a phone and use it as a antenna type. डिंग मुखा
හරි ඔකේ අසයිමන්ට්ස් වලට කොහොමද ලකුණු දෙන්නේ කියලානේ එතකොට දැනට අපි අසයිමන්ට්ස් වලට 5% මාක්ස් ඒ කියන්නේ ටෝටල් එන්ඩ් එක්සෑම් ඒ කියන්නේ ටෝටල් මාක්ස් වලින් 5% දෙන්න තමයි අපි බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්නේ ඊට පස්සේ වැඩියෙම් අමාවුන්ට කියන්නේ එන්ඩ් එන්ඩ් එක්සෑම් එකට 60% මිඩ් එක්සෑම් එකට අපි हाथरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टरक्टर
get some uh, understanding about the ANSI software. So I will upload the course, the presentations I am doing and the videos I'm doing into this LMS. And also uh, I will give some quizzes uh, whenever I can during the class. And also, I mean, uh, so I hope that you will participate in order to do the quizzes, right? Only, the, only if you are doing during the class only, you will get the marks. Otherwise, uh, you can't get marks for the quizzes. And uh, uh, so basically those are the things that I had to share with you. So do we have any other questions that you would like to ask? So, so you need to do this uh, activity by getting into groups. So you can get into groups of three and then you have to do this activity. And then I want you to submit uh, the, uh, you know, the, um, this, the the final outcome as a pdf uh, to the lms so i will create a submission link in here and then you can upload to that one right i will give give you one week time to try to complete it and submit it so uh, i hope you are clear so that's all from me so we can end the session if you would like, because I think that the interactive session, it's difficult to have via the Zoom link, I think. So if you have any suggestions to uh, have the uh, interactive sessions online, you can you please let me know? Uh, because I don't know how to may allow you, how to make you do activities within groups inside the Zoom link. And also, um, uh do you want me to if you like if you like if you have any problems in attending the classes physically you have to let me know beforehand okay i mean uh, rather than me going to the class and not finding any student if you can let me know beforehand like at least one day or even one hour before the lecture that you can't come to the lectures that all the students have some kind of a thing to go to then you can let me know, okay, in the WhatsApp group, for example. And also my email address is like Vishaka B at SATC.ac.lk. So you can uh, contact me via that email address also. Okay. So I'm normally physically available at the campus. So you can come and meet me at the uh, CTR lab in the research building. So CTR office, sorry. Uh, in the research building. So you can ask questions from me. You can come and talk to me. You can send messages in the WhatsApp or you can email me, right? So I hope that uh, I will be able to give you some really good idea about the antennas and the designs. And also I hope that I can give you some uh, simulations and how to do the simulations of the antenna designs using the software basically, so that you are able to do both theory and simulations at the same time. So I hope you got uh, my messages. And uh, uh, so you can ask questions from me in Sinhala, English, or in uh, Tamil. Actually, I don't know. I'm so sorry. But uh, you can... Uh, ask questions uh, from me as much as possible and then uh, i will uh, uh, answer those questions and try to solve those problems that you have okay so i think i will end the session now if you don't have any other questions so let's meet in the next class thank you so much